The ZDLC works from top to bottom by first trying to understand the as-is architecture of a system and of course the transformation to some notional to be architecture of a system both in terms of its requirements and in terms of potentially its components and what we do is we first of all elicit requirements from the as is and the to be and we take these requirements and we insert stakeholders into our hockey prioritization mechanism and this is really going to drill down so that we can understand what the technical requirements would be for an implementation. Then we take the business requirements uh, from the as is and the to be and we score them high, medium and low with respect to the stakeholders and this way we have a full stakeholder map and a balanced prioritization of the business requirements against those stakeholders. So we might consider this as a balanced prioritization of the what against the who. Then we can drill down and what we do here is we rotate so the business requirements now become the y-axis and then we elicit the user requirements uh, for the target process. This is very much the 2B. And we score, again, high, medium and low, the business requirements against the user requirements. So we might think of this as the, um, the what against the how. We can drill down further and then take the what or the user requirements, which becomes the y-axis, and then think about how we're going to implement it. So these would be the technical requirements. So having derived then the technical requirements, so for each of the user requirements we think about what we have to do technically to implement them, and then once again we score high, medium and low for those technical requirements. The next drill down <coughs> takes the technical requirements um, and transforms those. So we now go to what we call a level four. But before we do that we in introduce the notion of the goal quality indicator matrix and what that is about is it's about the elicitation of non-functional requirements. So what are the quality attributes for SLAs for a system? So we look for the inefficiency drivers and we use a goal, que goal question indicator matrix to understand what those inefficiency drivers are and this then can provide what we call a yield from which we can derive the non-functional requirements and the measurable quality attributes. So once we've got these and we've got our scored user requirements against technical requirements, we can go back. Now what we're looking to do is understand the technical requirements against the processes and the entities and any notional communication between them and score high, medium and low in terms of the technical requirements and these processes and entities and the communication that they may engender. So we score these high, medium and low. Now once we've got at this level, level four, the processes and entities against the technical requirements, we can now start to think about the how and the how well. So the processes, entities and the communications that occurs between them against the non-functional requirements, which is where the goal question indicator matrix and the derived NFRs and the quality attributes come in. So now we've got a full picture of a set of requirements, both functional, process entities and communication, and the non-functional, the how well. Once we've got this, we can start to create models. So we start to create, create a model, and we use coloured Petrinets, which is the top diagram, and we use testable integration architecture, which is the bottom diagram, in order to model both our functional and our non-functional requirements as models. So this models all of the requirements in a single model. And the benefit of what we do in ZDLC is we use modelling and simulation to test the models to see that they do indeed meet the requirements. And sometimes in the process of doing that we find some requirements cannot both be met, in which case we, we get a consistency measure um, as well through the tools. The simulation then is played out and we can do this iteratively um, over a period of time in fairly close tight iterative loops and the beauty of this is of course is if we have to change anything we've got full traceability all the way back up to the users, the who, against the business requirements which were the original what's. So this is really the core of ZDLC but we don't stop there because once we've got a, a model functional and non-functional of what is supposed to be built and we're sure that that meets the requirements because we've tested them we can go to the next step and what we can do here is we can generate the artifacts 
because this is now a validated model, we can generate the artifacts which, which minimise defect injection. And these artifacts are the very same artifacts that are used to drive development. So this might be BPMN, Beppel, State Charts, WSDL and bespoke directives. And then we hand that off to the development teams who then go and use their workflow manager, communication, whatever technology they need in order to implement the solution. So once they've done that, of course, now it's gone into a black hole. and We're not quite sure whether they've implemented correctly. And this is where the last stage comes in. So having implemented things, what we can then do, so they've gone off and built stuff, is we use SDP. We reverse engineer the logs in SIT and use those as observations against the very same models that drove the development in the first place. And that way, the SDP monitor and the SDP analyzer measure the deviation through the SIT runs and ensure that what was built, what was delivered into SIT, meets the original requirements and where it does not meet in that comparison it can issue a report to say where the discrepancy is and this is how it does root cause analysis for complex defects. So this in, a, in effect is our complete SDLC, ZDLC life cycle so I hope you've enjoyed the movie.